All right, we're going to pick up, um, I'm going to usually say where we left off, but that's not going to be the case. What we're actually going to do is we're going to backtrack and redo it again, because after looking over what I did last time in order to get all the code examples in this you know, tutorial document to match up with what we're going to be doing, the only way to really do it is to make sure that you're using MVC3. So I'm going to recreate everything that we just recreated in the first video. You're not going to get all the explanation. If you want the explanation, you can go back and watch that video. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the settings that will be better for what we're doing, that, in other words, the ones that are going to match up here, and build the few controllers and test them really quick. Should be able to do it in about five to ten minutes, I'm hoping. And um, those of you here in the classroom, I know a lot of you are already working ahead and redoing it. All right, so I, our objective here is to build this music store application. Um, one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to create a new project. So I'm all the way down to page nine. Um, when you create the new project, we are going to create it with uh, the following settings. So we are at the top of page 12. So I'm going to go over to Visual Studio. I am using Visual Studio 2012. I'm going to do New Project. Make sure I have C Sharp selected. And I'm going to do an MVC3 application, making sure it's C Sharp. I'm sticking with the .NET 4.5 framework. MVC3, 4.5, and C Sharp. I am going to rename my application again. This time I'll put dashes in it. And I've already selected a folder where I'm putting my work. I do want uh, to do a separate directory for the solution. That's not really necessary. I think at this point it's probably a good practice because it is a fairly complex project. Um, and then, of course, if I was like, doing anything such as GitHub or similar, I would turn on source control. I'm not worried about that right now either. So I'm saying OK. I'm going to let it build out um, some components here. Uh, the first thing it's going to ask us uh, is the type of template that we're going to use. My recollection is, is that they want us to use empty. Uh, the view engine is Razor and HTML5 semantic markup. And you notice in the newer versions, HTML5 is the standard, so that, that's not a thing anymore. Uh, so the default settings here basically are fine. As it's doing its work, I'm going to go back to the document. And of course, one of the things that the author had us do initially was to walk through you know, what it builds automatically, all the different folders, and the type of content that would natively go in there. That we talked about a little more extensively in the first video. And given your experience so far in this course, you guys should understand that already. All right, we're going to add a home controller next. To add a home controller, we're going to go to uh, the controllers folder inside the project. Just give it a right click, add, and then of course like the default uh, choice for the controllers fo folder is a controller. So I'm going to click that. We are going to call it home. We're going to leave that uh, empty, I believe. Let's just double check. And then it's going to create this file for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and say add. And you see it created the home controller. And then what they wanted us to do is just do a, a simple alteration in the return statement here for the index method. And what they wanted us to do is just type in return hello from home. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. Control S to save. Oh, thank you. Just being reminded that I failed again. You should, have, you should have let the thing fail on launch. It would have been more interesting, but you were being polite. So, <laughs> yes, I do need to change the return type to string. Um, and you can just see I, I just typed in that simple message or pasted it, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button here and have it come up in the browser. 
just happens to come up on my second screen, so let's pull it back over. And you can see that the default index page from the home controller is being brought up successfully. Back to Visual Studio, I'm going to hit the stop button. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a store controller. Once again, it's going to be an empty template. You can see the store controller came up on the screen here. And then we're going to replace some of the code in that file with the following. I'm just going to copy it right from the text, control C. I'm replacing this part here. And this one, once again, has three different methods inside of it. Right now, they're all set to return strings. There's the index method, that's the default, browse, and details. Each one of them has a different message so that we know when we hit it that it will display the message that we need. All right, let's control S to save, play button again. In this case, the default is loading up just fine. But now we are going to the store controller. So I'm going to type store with a capital S to match the controller. And you can see we're getting it from store index. From there, we're going to append to the URL. And this time we're going to add browse. And we have a failure. Oh, I typed browser. Okay. A failure in my typing. The browse method works just fine. And then there was a details method. And that works just fine as well. So, so far so good. You see how, like, after you've done it once and you come back and you do it, how, like, really, it's actually pretty simple. Right? But when you're trying to like weed through all the ideas and the concepts and the exam, you know, it's like your head's swimming and you're trying to do something and that you're not really locking into what you're doing. Uh, so hopefully that, just by doing it again, really kind of helped to clarify things. Once again, uh, we just saw this in action, but how you try the different URLs and how the URL points to the controller and the methods within the controller. Now they want us to actually replace that browse method, and I'm going to just copy the whole thing so I don't make a mistake. Um, but what they're going to do is they're going to add um, an argument here. So we're going to have the capability of passing to the method a string, which will be received, concatenated, and then it runs through this special method here. And the HTML encode basically is, is a method that, as we learned in the previous video, that prevents people from injecting scripts into whatever they're submitting in the URL. And this isn't filling it into a form field, mind you. This would be typing it into the URL itself and being able to execute it. That's kind of a scary thing when you think about it. And this little method prevents that from being possible. So that's kind of an important little tidbit there. Control S to save. And then in this case, what they wanted us to type was store browse. And then there was some additional stuff. What was it? Question mark genre equals disco. So what's happening there is Disco is being passed as a parameter. It's being received from by that method, adding it to the string, and then sending it back to us. Now, if I happen to throw in something like this, script, whether it's a valid script or not, I'm just curious to see what message it's going to throw back. Interesting, right? Now, this
this is a you know, application crash. You, what you would normally do in this situation is you would set up um, a try catch to catch the exception and not let the application crash because a script was injected. What you might want to do is try to find a way to lock that person out of out of there. But then again, you know, keep keep in mind some people fall victim to clicking on things errantly, and it's not necessarily the user's fault that they ended up in that situation. In fact, that's probably most often the case. Okay, back to Visual Studio and hit the stop button. And we managed uh, to get that one correct. Now we're going to change the details method. So I'm going to grab that whole method, replace details, and paste. Saving it and launching it once again. Uh, same type of concept here again. Uh, that being that we're going to pass in a parameter. This time it's a number. And this time it's just being added directly. We're not using that encode thing. Why is, why is it not necessary here? Because we're not setting a string. Right? A number can't contain a script. Uh, that's, that's the point. And as a result of that, it also kind of does something interesting to our URL. In this case, we'll be able to say store details. And then instead of the question mark genre equals, we can just do forward slash 5. And the 5 goes in as the value that's being passed. It's kind of, kind of slick. Well, I typed in 54. OK, 54. Studio 54. That's what I, that exactly popped into my head. You're dating yourself typecasting your music preference all at the same time. All right, folks. So if uh, you guys, I'm guessing most of you here in the room are already ahead of me, which is fine. If you happen to be with me, uh, this is excellent repetition. So everything that we did in the first video, we managed to pull off in 11 minutes, it looks like. Something like that. 12 minutes. With, with a much briefer explanation. So we're going to kick in now at the page of top, the top of page 24, and we're going to be looking at views and models. All right. So we saw how controllers work, and in this case, the controller itself was putting something back up on the screen. That might be the case. Sometimes you will have controllers that will do exactly that. Other times, the controllers will do more than that, uh, and it might just be to push us to a spot where we're either pulling in data, running some sort of programmatic logic, or just very simply creating a view. And th that's really kind of what they're focusing on here. Now, we are going to do a little bit of um, stuff here that's going to help facilitate that. All right, we're going to go back now to the home controller to read the instructions. And we're going to read get it to return an action result. So we're going to go back to what this was. And I don't know if I can just control Z back to it. I'll try. All right, I was. So we need that home controller to end up looking like this. So the return is an action result. And then the return item is actually a method called view. So by default, when we go to the application, it'll launch index and it will generate a view, which is of a data type called action result. So we're passing that type of object around. Control S to save. Now here's the interesting part of it. We want to add a view, right? And some of the neat tools that are built into Visual Studio that make your life so much easier is that, OK, well, I want to create a view for index. How am I going to do that? You can just put any. Put your cursor anywhere inside of the index method, right click, and then you'll notice that by default, it's got an option for add view. And then you will get this uh, dialog box that comes up, and I'm going to try to have these side by side here. And we're going to have some settings that we're going to want to make. The view engine that we're going to use and the one that you've been taught in this course is using Razor. That's kind of been a standard for a while now. Clearly, it was standard or at least an emerging 
uh, standard back then. Um, notice some of the options here, the, the name, index, what other engines are available. Well, you can use ASPX. That's when, if you're going to do standard ASP.NET. Um, notice that you can choose a master page if you have one or if you have some sort of pre-configured layout. That can be brought in here. And if I was seeing all the instructions correctly, I think those are all the settings that we need to make. And you guys are also working on this, so if I'm missing one, just make sure that you point it out to me. All right. And then we're just going to go ahead and click Add. And as the book's pointing out, what that's going to do now is in the Views folder, it creates another folder called Home. That folder, of course, matches the Home Controller. It's not a mistake that it's called that. And then inside there we have our index, basically HTML file, in the form of a CS HTML file, meaning that C Sharp and the fact that we're doing um, the view is being generated by Razor. You can identify that you're working with Razor if you're looking at code pretty easily because you start seeing these at signs, and you start seeing, the, seeing these things called like view bag. Right? And there are special tools for helping us uh, do things. But when you say view bag title, what do you suppose that does if I launch the page? Well, it, well it's going to render the page. Obviously, we're going to get an H2 on the page. right? Somehow, it's creating all the other HTML infrastructure somewhere, somehow. right? I'm not typing it in here. But it's telling us that the title tag at the top of the page is going to be populated with index. And just to prove my point, okay, just to be a little snarky about it, but just so you can see where it ends up. I'm, I'm anticipating that the next step is go ahead and bring it up uh, in the browser, or is that a little too presumptuous? In fact, you know, we can bring it up in the browser now, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Something changed. Well, the fact that we used an HTML tag changed. Right, because if you go back to Visual Studio, index was inside of H2 tags. Clearly, that is not Times Roman. So there's some CSS happening here automatically as well. Thank you, ASP.NET, for automatically generating stuff. And then notice that the title, and if I do a right-click view source, you should always do this when you're learning a new technology, is see what it automatically generates. And notice, not only is there CSS, but it also automatically bundles in the modernizer and uh, the minified jQuery library. It's an older version, but it's still jQuery. It's there for, for the using. Additionally, that view bag title thing, that's what it did. MVC? Yes, it is based on the MVC version. If you had features you wanted to leverage in like version 2 or 3 of jQuery, you can just pull in a different library and fix the code and boom, you're done. Not a big deal. For most of the stuff that you're going to do, though, you're going to discover that even these older versions of jQuery will work just fine. And the other uh, reason I see people using it, too, is the older libraries are a little smaller also run a little bit more efficiently, so that, you know, there's some uh, thought to that as well. Okay, now I'm going to jump back over to Visual Studio again. Hit the stop button. Let's see what our next set of instructions is. So really what, the, what they're doing here at this point is explaining, I think, basically the same thing that I just did. So 
So if you, I mean, if you want to change what this stuff says, you know, feel free. All right, now they're identifying for you the fact that it's common when you're building an application to have layouts, you know, or a format for your pages that is consistent. And chances are you'll have at least one main layout format for your site. It's kind of common sense. But chances also are, if it's a site that you're building in like this, that you'll probably have multiple views. And if remember when we were looking at like the sample version of the site before, how we had some views for like if we're looking at a list of genres and different views if we're looking at albums and then different views for looking at a shopping cart. And they're all consistent but different at the same time. So we're going to basically leverage that now. Now, stuff like that is going to end up in what they call the shared folder in this architecture. So if you go ahead and expand that, and actually I would take it even further and just go ahead and open up the file. And then just take a look at inside and notice kind of like the mixture here of the HTML, so now you know exactly where your doc type and your HTML structure are coming from. They're coming from here. And you can see how all these different razor directives are being used to help populate the page. So we already saw how this one works. Now we're taking a look at how URL content works, and notice what's happening is that this directive is going to turn into this in the browser. It's kind of neat to kind of see the before and after so you understand that that's where it comes from. Could, have, could it just be hard-coded, right? Yes. You could just hard-code it if you want. But this is done automatically by the engine. It's automatically determining that we need certain things and, and, and is generating it for us. So my rule of thumb is if the template is doing it, just leave it alone. Could I go in and manually tweak it? Absolutely. Um, all right, and actually I should probably uh, jump back here because the other thing that they're pointing out here also is this directive or this method really is the proper way to say it which says render body so what this is going to do this is kind of like a like a master page in a sense and this is the area that's going to receive the content for the page so the stuff that we saw here for the home controller or excuse me the home index page and the only content is this but then we also have the razor part, which allows us to populate the title. So this stuff is going to get inserted into the layout. The title, obviously, is going to be inserted here. And then everything else is dropped in here. And that's why this page does not need the doc type and all that stuff. Yeah, you, in fact, you will have multiple layouts. In this case, this layout is very, very simplistic. But like I said, we might have a layout for the shopping cart, a layout for viewing the products, a layout for, you know, pick something and you can create a layout for it. And then you can selectively use the layout with specific content. And that will be something that can be programmatically controlled. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so in this case, uh, they want us to do a little bit of work, it seems to me. And what they want us to change, and I just want to make sure I'm doing it to the right file, this has to be the, the one layout file that we have. They want us to add some HTML to it. And I'm trying to copy it here. So I'm just copying that little snippet of the code. 
And then we are going to go back to the layout.cshtml page. Well, that's kind of an interesting view. All right. And then right above render body in the body section of the code, we're going to paste in that stuff. It did not paste in cleanly, so I'm going to highlight all that. And then I'm going to do a right click and format selection to clean it up. Now, this is just static HTML, folks. This part of it. So, in other words, this is something that's going to be inserted into every page that uses this layout. Notice that there's one hard-coded URL here. It's relative to the application. That's why it starts with a forward slash. So what it's doing is it's kind of pre-typing the URL. It's saying, run the application, and then go to the store controller index. That's what that's saying. No. No, this is just a link. It's just creating a link called store, and when I click on it, it okay, it just fills in the URL, basically, if that makes sense. I hope it does. If you haven't saved your work, you might want to. Uh, the other thing they want us to do is update the style sheet. Now, in MVC3, you're going to see that they're putting the style sheet in the content folder. That's similar to how they some ASP.NET traditional formats will do that as well, depending on the template that you choose. More modern ones will have a separate styles folder. So this is a different mindset when they were using MVC3. Uh, but as long as you know where it is, that's really kind of the key. Uh, let's make the assumption that they want us to work with the site CSS file, but then also just take notice that there's a themes folder and there's a base style with its own images, its own jQuery stuff. Notice all the jQuery libraries that are available. And the way that some of these are named, notice it's pretty easy to figure out what they are. Accordions, uh, autocompletes, I'm just date picker, resizable, slider, all that kind of stuff is built right into jQuery. So jQuery not only is like a library of actions, it's also a library of components, visual components that you can use to style your page. And that's kind of interesting, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of that. Notice they are CSS files. So we can use some jQuery code, add an accordion, which is an expanding panel, basically. And then the CSS for that panel is pre-written. What's cool about that is it allows for a lot of rapid development. It also allows for a lot of like certain kind of user interface special effects that are pre-configured, making your life a little bit easier. All right, so assuming once again that we're going to work on site CSS, let's go back to the book. All right, so what they're having us do here, it looks like, is they're going to have us overwrite that file. All right, so what they want us to do then is right-click, add, new item, we want to find style sheet, I'm just going to start typing style, yes, we're in C-sharp. They want us to call it the same thing, you know, and, and here's my little, like, I wonder why. Why not just go into the file that's there and delete everything, but, you know, we're just following instructions. Okay, let's, let me get the error message and then I'll react to it. I won't be like the president, I won't tweet out my thoughts right away. All right, so dragged and dropped from where? From my Windows folder. 
All right. So I'm going to get a, an error message because we're going to overwrite something. Okay, so we're going to do that. And now it's asking me to choose again. I'm just gonna, I'm just following the screens, folks. Or delete the existing item first. Okay, so I guess I should probably read the instructions then, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, so there is an instruction to drag and drop it in from the external folder. And I was telling you not to do it, okay. Don't listen to me very much then. All right, so apparently we need to go uh, back to our course folder here. Grab this zip file that's part of the assets. So I know I have that in my download folder, I believe. Now I just have to find my browser or the correct folder. And since I know it's in here, MBC. All right, this must be it. And I'm going to actually extract this to my desktop for now. And then once it's unzipped, it wants us to find that same folder, and it wants us to just drag over the CSS, I'm assuming. Is that correct? Okay, so images and CSS is, is being dragged over. Okay, so let's just grab both of those, and drag and drop, and I'm right into the content folder if it'll let me. All right, so uh, I have a dialog window open, so i got to cancel first. Let's try that again. Right into the content folder. I want to replace it, and apparently I do. All right, it says uh, the file has been modified outside the source editor. Do you want to reload it? And I'm going to say yes, and what that's referring to is the fact that I was already looking at the CSS file, so I want to look at the one that's being brought in. If you want, you know, it might not be a bad idea to just go in here and just take a look at some of the stuff they've done. Chose fonts, some layouts, some images coming in, some key styling elements. Now the point here is to save you all the trouble of figuring out what it should look like. So we will be appreciative and just work with it. That does not mean that you can't go in and tweak this and make it look like something else. You absolutely can. All right, let's go back to Visual Studio, if I can find it on my screen here. Excuse me, back to the instructions. And I'm, I'm guessing at this point they want us to, to launch it. Is that correct? And, and take a look at what we, what we have. So i got to remember that CSS is linked up to that layout page, and then all the pages are pulling from that layout page. And here we go. And then if you want to just check your source again, be in the habit of it and see what it created. Here's the part we pasted in, paste in that's static. Here's the part that's being pulled in dynamically by whatever page you're pulling in. You want to test it with by clicking on Store. just to make sure that everything is still working. I'm going to close up some of these tabs here and hit the stop button. They've done all the CSS work for, for us at this point. Yeah, they, they're just using the one that's there. I mean, I mean, it's pretty common sense if I wanted to use a different CSS file, I could put in one, call it whatever I want, then I just go to the layout page, change the link, and it, it's going to work. It's not a problem. Um, but we're just following their instructions. So this author thought that it was good to just replace, so that's what we're doing. And one of the reasons for that, you got to remember, is the convention for this framework is that it creates 
one called site.css, so let's not mess with that. It just will create less problems. Go with what's there. All right, so we've created controllers. We just created a view. And now we're going to look at uh, a model. Now, from your studies, I'm hoping you understand that a model is a way to kind of both define data, work with data, um, interact with data in some sort of a repository. Um, so it's pretty powerful, but really, you know, the, the key of it all is the data, you know, that we have um, some sort of repository of information that we're interfacing with. Well, I'm using the word repository as kind of like a generic term. So it's not like, I'm sorry, repeat your question. Well, repository, yes. Yeah, it's like where you're putting stuff. So it could be a database, could be a text file, could just be a JSON file. There's no, no real hard and fast rule of how the data is going to be used and manipulated and stored. I mean, it really, it's up to you, the application developer. I mean, generally speaking, people like to use databases because they have a lot of capabilities and storage capacity is great and you can organize your data and it's got its own functionality. But there's no reason it has to be that. It can be an embedded database. It could just be a table. It could be a text file. It could be a text file that, that has XML data or um, JSON information in it. It doesn't really matter as long as it holds the information. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do, um, knowing that a model works with information, is we need to actually define a model. And the first one I think they're going to have us do here is one that's going to hold the genres of music. And like we did with the controllers, we're just going to right-click the models folder. We're going to add a class file. So all models really do sit inside of a class file. That's how we generate them. So let's go ahead and go through those steps. So find the models folder, right-click, add a class. The template they would like us to choose, do they indicate that here? Yeah, they're not really indicating a template, are they? So what they want us to do is just we're creating a generic class file. It's going to be called genre, or however you think that should be pronounced. And you can, you can add the .cs if you want. And there's no other real options. It's just going to be an empty C-sharp file. By default, it imports all the stuff that we use most often in MVC applications. It sets up a namespace, and it sets up the class. All right, now we're going to add a setter and a getter, and this is going to be a, a little bit of a process here, so you're going to see we're going to do a bunch of these. So we're going to be inside the class called genre, and we're going to paste in a setter and a getter. So in other words, we're creating a data field or a property. You know, depending on you know, depending on how you were taught objects and classes, you know, this is the equivalent of putting, uh, you know, privates up at the top of a Java class, and a class that's going to be instantiated, right? So this isn't going to be something that is going to execute on its own. This is a class. The purpose of a class is to instantiate objects. So what's going to happen, and I want you to conceptually think about this and try to keep it in your head, is every time that we're going to interact with the data, 
it's going to instantiate the data from its source. So we're not actually going to manipulate the data directly. We're going to manipulate data that's become part of that object on the fly, which may or may not be written back to the data source. Does that make sense? We might just pull the data out and then use it. Or we might take that data, change it, and write the changes back. But in order to do that, we instantiate the data from the source. And that's why we create a class to do it. Well, here, here's the trick. It's not that it has no, depend, not that it has no dependencies, because it can have dependencies. Uh, but in this case, it is the portal to the data and can also be the blueprint to build the data at the same time. Okay, So that's the power of MVC, folks, that I can create a, a model for data for a database table that doesn't even exist. And then this will help to generate that database table if it's not already there. Okay? And that's kind of the fun of it. All right, control S to save. Now the subsequent ones here uh, is we're going to create an album class. So we're going to follow the same procedure. So right click, add, class, call it album, make sure, make sure it's uh, C sharp. Inside that file, we're going to add a couple getters and setters. And if you look at the stuff that's being added here, right, for genre, What, what are the different types of music? You know, um, all we need to know is the name, right? But for an album, it's kind of nice to know the title and what type of music it is. And really, you could argue year it's released, the artist. You could put all sorts of stuff in there. But there's a strategy here. They, they do have a strategy. So Control-S to save. Now it's saying that we can go ahead and modify the store controller to use views, which will dis display dynamic information from our model. Okay, so even though we've done some of this work, we're creating the model in the aftermath, and now we want to look at the stuff that the model is pertaining to, so we have to adjust our views and our controllers to accommodate for this. So you see... Uh, what's going on there. The first thing we're going to need to do is we have to add a using statement to the top of the store controller. So let's find the store controller. You can see we already have some using statements, but now what we're going to do is we're going to use the syntax that we've generated by virtue of what, what we called our application. And you, you guys are going to see right away, I'm going to run into a problem because I named my application something else. In other words, I didn't name it capital M, lowercase vc, music store. So I'm going to have to tweak it, okay? And models is still going to work because there's a models folder in both spots. And this should flag an error. Now, if you guys... If yours is named MVC Music Store, in other words, that's what it says up here or up here, it'll match up just fine. But mine says something else. So actually what's kind of interesting here, honestly, is to type it in manually so you can see what IntelliSense would do with it. So I'm going to type using M and see how my application is. Yeah. Even more interestingly, notice how it's being expressed not with dashes. Yeah. So I'm going to play the fool. I'm going to go, well, I type dashes. Yeah, you guys are already anticipating that. 
Does anybody know why? Well, there's naming conventions, but naming conventions for what? There are, you see, there are rules for how you can name projects and how you can name stuff that go into databases and how you can create namespaces. There's rules for those things. And if you look at the rules for naming things in C Sharp, naming objects and classes and namespaces, uh, dashes aren't allowed. Oops. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'll, I'll go with... I'll go with this other approach. It's too late now to, to undo it, apparently, right? So I'm just going with that. And then models. And see how it, it, it finds the stuff in the project for you. That's correct. Yeah, that is absolutely right, Carl. It, adding this allows you to use all the models within the application. So all of a sudden, all those things that we built. Now notice that they're not like views and they're not uh, controllers. Well, they could be controllers, but any of the data models that we're going to build can now be imported into and instantiated and manipulated within this page that we're working on now, which happens to be the store controller. So it's kind of good for the controller to be able to have access to whatever models it needs, but interestingly, whatever controllers it needs too. We're talking like flexibility. Control S to save. All right. Now we're going to make some tweaks. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change things. So it's, next we'll update the details controller action so it returns an action result rather than a string. So let's just change that action result. And then inside details, we're going to change the statements to match the ones in the book. Let's paste them in and take a look. So not that much of a different approach, but notice a little bit of a change. First of all, really important here, look at what's happening in that first line of code inside there. We're creating a variable, right, called album of type album, we, which we defined. We created that class. So we are instantiating the model that we just created. Which one? Well, the one that we're going to pump an ID to. Well, we haven't figured that out yet. But we do know that in album, we have title, right? So every time we instantiate an album, it has a title that's unique, hopefully. So we'll instantiate it based on the ID. So if somebody requests ID 5, we find album number 5. We pull it up from whatever data place it comes from, and then we create that on the fly as an object in our program. And we are then set to manipulate it. It's pulling in the title because that's what we're asking for. And then it's going to return, using the view method, what we just created, which is an album called album. Right. And really, you got to remember, when we run it in the URL, we're going to say store slash details slash five. The application will go to the model, instantiate that based upon looking it up from the data source, finds the five, pulls the one back that matches it, creates it, and then it's available to be seen. You guys starting to see how this works now? I'm hoping. The beauty, folks, the beauty of MVC is what we're doing here with ASP.NET and C Sharp. Any combination of technologies that does MVC does the same thing. So once you understand it in ASP.NET, Ruby is really doing exactly the same thing. PHP, you can do MVC with PHP. That's doing the same thing. It's, that's the architecture. That's what it's designed to do. It 
it's creating yeah and it's creating it on the fly it's not pre-existing it's creating it on the fly as we as we call upon it All right, I think we have plenty of explanation there. So our next step now, it says, is, let's now create a view template that uses our album to generate an HTML response. Before we do that, we need to build the project. Now here's something you guys need to know. We created these files, but until we run a build, those things will not actually get built. In other words, so they will not instantiate, and therefore they will not execute when you launch the application. Because we built a model, we didn't actually build or instantiate that thing into existence yet. Does that make sense? So that's why they have you do the build. Now you can you can go to the menu like they show. In fact, uh, it's that's good to know, right? It's not my habit to go to the build menu, frankly. Um, kind of really haven't done that for years, but you can just click build solution. The other thing that you can do is come up here to the root of the project and just do a right click and do build or rebuild. And if you have problems and you guys may have discovered this already in this framework and working with Java, that a lot of times what you do is you do a clean and you do a build or clean and rebuild. And then in here, if you want to do a clean and rebuild, you do this one. But we haven't really built it much, so I'm just going to do a build. So if you made changes, you're confident they should work, and they're not working, that might be a thing that you have needed to do, especially if you're changing any of the models. The, with the models, that's critical. All right. Now that we've done that build, what happens is, since it's built those models, right, um, we are now able to add a view. So what's going to happen is we are going to go back to the that details view and we're going to right click in between there and we are going to select add view. So we're coming here, right click, right inside details, right, just so you can see it better, Any, anywhere inside here. and add view. Now I know we're going to get uh, some prompts here to do it a certain way, so let's follow that. And here's where you're going to start to see some different selections being made. All right, so details, razor, those are going to be common. All right, now notice here that we're going to actually click on create a strongly typed view. And we're going to choose our model. And which one does it want us to choose? Album. Yeah, it's leveraging the fact that we have a model of data, and we're going to build a view around that model. OK. Uh, any other options it adds here? Scaffold template, empty. I want you to click on that one, though. What do you guys see here? No, this is these are all the standard database operations. Right. I mean, basically what you have the capability of here is I could create a view. I could choose create and create a view that will automatically allow me to add stuff to the data model. So it'll create a page that, with all the components that allow me to interact through that data model with the data repository, whatever that happens to be. So if it's a database, I'm sorry? Yeah, in this case, that's not what I'm doing. But what I'm showing you is that I can tell it at this point by scaffolding that allows me to build the components that will allow me to interface with the database right into the application without having to do any extra coding. It just does it. 
huge, to quote our president, huge, it's a huge thing, it really is, rather than have to, you guys probably wrote some scripts in like PHP where it's like create table, insert into, right, well here it just does that, and you hit the play button, and you land on a page where it's got a form and you just type the stuff in and hit submit and you're done. See the power there? Doesn't mean you shouldn't understand it. You, understanding it really kind of helps you quite a bit because you can still tailor it. But we're choosing empty. Um, is it asking us to use a particular layout or master page? Yeah, leave empty if it is set in Razor View Start File, which I believe is our situation, right? All right, so we're going to go ahead and click Add. And it brings up this page. So this is a view, right? So if we come down here and find it, where do we find it? Notice it created a store folder. Because details is a method inside the store controller. So when it creates a view, it creates it inside the store folder, which matches the name of the controller. This is our file. Notice the razor directives. Yep, I mean, we know what this one does already, right? We know what this is. We just put in whatever HTML content we want here. And what is going on here? Yeah, I'm not hypothesize. Well, I, I, I like where you're going with that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's going to our app. It's going to our models. It's finding album. And it's our model. That's what we're working with. Our, our data is becoming instantiated. So we're creating a page, but we also have an instance of whatever we're pulling up from the, from the data. Within this method, the object is the album, yes. The album that we asked for by ID. It's being turned into... Uh, tangible, it's been instantiated. So, Celia, that was the terminology you were trying to... Yeah, we are instantiating a piece of data that we're going to be able to use. Okay. Uh, let's see what our next little directive is here. Do they want us uh, changing anything? It says, update the H2 tag. So, it reads like this. Album it would probably be helpful if I could, uh, be nice if I could record both screens at the same time. So, at model.title. And, you know, what's fascinating about that is how that just does this stuff automatically. Because, you see, I could have pulled up title, but... It also recognizes that I have other choices that I've created, too. See that? I can pull up genre real easily. So just like we did up, up here, here, whatever our, our model happens to be, we're going to pull back the title dynamically. Says now we're going to make a similar update for the store browse action method. So let's go back to the store controller. Zoom out just a little bit. Where were we supposed to run it? Okay. Oh, well, let's run it then. What am I supposed to do with it? And 
what are we supposed to do? Okay, store slash details slash five. What should happen? Yeah. We don't really have much yet, so. But it is working. Because we told the controller, I guess if you look at the controller, that we're going to concatenate the word album and the ID. So that's what it did. Pretty exciting. Hit the stop button. OK. Uh, so now we're going to go back and we're going to work on the browse method. So back to Visual Studio, store controller, browse method. We're going to update that code to match this. So we're going to switch to action result, and then we're going to replace the interior code to this. All right, so I'm changing this to action result. Changing the code to that. Once again, notice the fact that we're instantiating. Nothing too much different than that. Control S to save. And want us to launch it again? Nope, we got to add the view first. We can't see it until we add the view. That's right. All right, so once again, anywhere inside this method, anywhere from the beginning to the end of it, you can right-click, add view. We're going to assume all the same settings. Automatically is called browse. Ah, okay, so we're going to change this to not album, but genre, which makes sense because that's what we're doing. Scaffold is empty. And let's go ahead and click Add. Once again, you see the same type of thing going on. We can only anticipate that they want us to change some of this code as well. So looks like this is the only part that's changing, the stuff in between the H2s. So let's copy that. Save it. We're going to run it again. And this time, this is going to be our URL. So hit play. Store, browse, genre, disco. And if you can get this up on your screen, you're doing well. All right, I, I'm back to the instructions now. And our, our next step here is that we are going to go ahead and create something a little bit more robust for the index. Um, you can see the, the updated code here. What I'm going to do is just it being anticipatory is I'm going to copy and paste this whole method here in advance. And this is going to be for the store index. So we do want to go back to the store controller. Oh, don't forget to hit that stop button. And now we're going to replace index with the code I just copied. Uh, I'm also going to do the, uh, I did not paste cleanly, did it? Let's control Z that. And then I'm just going to do a right click. Actually, I'm just going to do a save. And then I'm going to do a little indenting here. So it looks like this. Now what we're doing here is we're creating an array list, right? And we're naming it that. 
And notice that in the array list, we're just going to be instantiating as basically called upon whatever category we're choosing, whether it's disco, jazz, or rock. And these are being you know, predetermined values. Control S. Next step, once again, is to generate a view. So anywhere inside that index method, right click Add View. Let's move the dialog off to the left here. Bring our instructions back. So this time, we do want to stick with the music store models and all the other settings. Well, all the settings look look just fine. Click Add. Once again, we have a blank file. Then we're going to change something here. Right up at the top, the model declaration, we're going to use the uh, I enumerable in order to be able to leverage that list. Don't need that declaration twice, just once. So what that's going to allow us to do is not only uh, instantiate, but to pick from that list that we put in the controller. Yeah, that, that's because it, it wants to match up with what my project is, which is, yeah, so, see, I'm going to run into this problem the whole way through, so. Yep, okay. Well, as long as I can, as long as I know that and can clean it up, it's okay. That, you know, when you're doing these tutorials and you're feeling lost, that's why it's really good to do it exact. All right, control S to save. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some stuff here. Now, notice that they're changing the title to store. We're going to change this to an H3. You know, I'm just going to copy paste. Maybe we could type it, I suppose. I'm just going to do it in pieces. So first we're going to put it in an H3 in a paragraph. We've already seen what this does. But this is a method now. So with the model, instead of like pulling in a title, for example, now we're going to run a method that's count, so it's going to tell us how many we have. Then we're beginning an unordered list that within it, we've got a little for each loop happening. Now, you guys at this point in your programming careers should start to recognize what's going on here, right? Right. In the controller, we do have this list. And what's going to happen here in this view is that we're going to leverage that list. First, it's going to start with a count. So it tries to figure out how many there are. But then we run the for each. And for each genre in model, so in other words, for everything that's listed, we are going to output the name of the genre. So if we have three, it's going to output three. If we have 20, it's going to output 20. Uh, and what am I referring to? I'm referring to the things on this list. So if I want to make that list longer, I very easily can. And because I'm doing it as a for each, it's just going to automatically know how many to do. It's going to list everything that I've got in there. Simple as that. Okay, save it. Control S. Now, the one thing that they have you do, you know, is they, they like you to type it, apparently, just to, so you can get a feel for what the IntelliSense does. You know, and that's not a bad thing to do because, really, that IntelliSense can really kind of accelerate your you know, work. I mean, you're not always going to have code to copy-paste. Sometimes you're going to have to create it. 
So that can be uh, very helpful. All right, so we're at the bottom of page 40 now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run uh, everything. I might suggest that before you begin, go up to your project node, build. We didn't really change any models, though, did we? Well, no harm done. Hit play. And then they did give us a specific URL, so I'm, I'm going to... Okay, so now we're just going to go to store is all it wants us to do. And we do have the link up here in the header, so I'm just going to click it. It did a count. And then it returned the three that we had. Pretty simple. Now, interestingly here, you know, we're doing this kind of simplistically right now and you know I'm trying to keep that in mind because what we did is we're hard coding our list right here later on it might actually make more sense to have that as part of our data structure as well so in other words you know have that listed in the database as opposed to hard coded into a controller just to give you an idea not necessarily not not directly to links programmatically. All right. So hopefully this is uh, what you guys are getting up on your screen and we are successful. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm just taking note of the fact that we're finishing up on page 40 in this video. I'm going to stop this video here because it's getting quite long and then I'm going to start a fresh one and we're going to take a short break.